Great customer of mine, Friesen Rentals and Hardware in Cedar, British Columbia, Canada, right here on Vancouver Island. They rented this uh, steel MS-170 chainsaw out to a guy and he phoned back about an hour later and he said it ran out of gas so I refilled it and now I can't get it to start. So guess what, now it's on my bench. I'm gonna show you guys why it wouldn't start and I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Welcome back to Steve Small End Saloon, guys. There's my website, stevesmallendsaloon.com. Check it out when you get a chance. Got a link up here in the information button too. As well as at the end of this video, I've got some clickable links for you there too on some videos I might be talking about. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, we got this chainsaw right here. Came across my bench, won't start. The guy just refilled it. First thing that crosses my mind always is the guy probably just had it flooded. So I took it outside and I did my unflooding procedure, which I also have a video on. Check that out up in the information button too. Unflooding it. I tried that, I took it outside, tried and tried and tried, it was not flooded. The other thing that I think about is, well, maybe the guy accidentally put his lawnmower gas in there again. Straight gas in this, maybe that's the problem. I flipped it over and took the fuel cap off and I looked in there and I went, wow, what is that? It was right full of bright red bar and chain oil in the fuel tank. And I went, oh, guess what? I'll bet you anything if I pull the oil cap off now, it's going to be full of fuel. I pulled the, the uh, oil cap off. And sure enough, I looked in there and no barn chain oil, it was full of mixed fuel. The guy accidentally got the two mixed up and he refilled the two the opposite way they should have been. So of course, guess what? Now I dump all that out. I refill those two tanks the way they should be with the proper uh, fluids in there. So this has actually happened to me many times in my life where somebody accidentally puts chain oil in their fuel tank and I know that the fuel filter now in the fuel line in the carburetor is all full of chain oil now. A lot of times you can get outside and, and just try to start it like normal and you just keep restarting it and restarting it and it will clear itself. It usually doesn't take any more than one Keystone light. That's all it takes usually It would not clear itself usually that works next thing I did is uh, take the uh, air filter cover off Like that air filter uh, off right down this hole right here. I Tried this to priming it. This works a lot of times try this first you just dribble a little bit of fuel down that hole right there to prime it with mixed fuel. Take it outside again and try to start it like you normally do. And you're gonna see it, it's gonna fire up. I did this about six times. Wouldn't clear, wouldn't clear. I get it to start and that fuel that I primed it with burns out and it still won't stay running. It's blowing white smoke out of there I know it's the, the carburetor and everything's still full of that chain oil because it's burning white smoke. If you guys did this, by the way, I just got to tell you guys this, don't worry about it. You didn't hurt your engine by doing this. There's no damage that has occurred in there. We just need to get the chain oil out of the fuel system so it'll keep on running and clear itself. I tried everything with that didn't work. Now what I do in a situation like this is that I know the fuel filter and the fuel line is so plugged with that bar and chain oil, I got to at least get that out of there. I don't want to take the carburetor off of this. You guys know me, I'm always trying to 
show you guys the easiest way to do something, the safest way to do something, and uh, something that's gonna save you guys some money. Don't take this into a shop yet. Try this. I haven't tried this yet. We're gonna do it right now together. I'm gonna fish that fuel line out of there. So we pull that whole fuel line out there. We're getting that fuel filter out. That's what we're doing. You see that right there? Um, hemostats, guys, I gotta tell you this right now. Medical hemostats like this, they are super inexpensive. If you guys do work around your shop a lot or even just minor, these things are so inexpensive. Buy a pair of these things. I swear to you guys, I use these things every day. I got a link on my description at the beginning of this video to take you back to check some of those out. We pinch that fuel line like that so the fuel line can't get lost down there. And we take that fuel filter out now. And that's probably just plugged with chain oil still. Carb spray, you got your little red tube on there like that. We're gonna clean that fuel, that fuel filter out. Make sure there's no chain oil in there. Uh, very important. Eye protection. You're gonna have some squirt in your eyes. That feels terrible. It burns your eyes. Wear some eye protection when you're doing this. Blast that fuel filter out like that so you know it's clear. If you have an air compressor, this is great. Blast that out, clean that uh, fuel filter now. I can blow through that fuel filter now with no resistance. There's hardly any resistance there. I know that that fuel filter is now clear. So put that aside. Now your fuel line right here is still probably full of chain oil. So what I do now, take that same carb spray with that red tube Jam that red tube all the way down that fuel line. And uh, you know what? Maybe grab a rag. Throw a rag over that so it's really not spraying in your face. And just give it a couple good shots. A couple good shots of carb spray. It's going to blow that oil back out of that fuel line. So now we know that the fuel line is actually clear of that chain oil. And we know the fuel filter is clear of that chain oil. Put your fuel filter back on. And again, make sure that there's nice fresh fuel in there, properly mixed fuel. Pop that fuel filter back down. And again, we didn't take the carburetor off. This is really not hard, guys. Fuel cap back on. And now we're going to try to restart it again because the only thing that's left is there's still going to be some chain oil inside the carburetor, but it's going to work its way through. You're going to see when you start this up now, it's going to actually smoke a little bit. Some white smoke because it's burning some of that chain oil through there again. Chain brake on like that. And uh, don't worry about my ventilation in here, you guys. I know it looks like I'm in, in an enclosed area. I'm not. The whole shop right now is wide open. I have great ventilation in here. But if you guys are doing this yourself, yeah, absolutely take it outside. And, uh, and we're gonna try this right now. I'm gonna try to start this and see what happens. Ooh, see that? Oh, you see that? White smoke, just like I said. So that was a choke on. Turn that choke off. It's getting there.
there you go. Whoa, white smoke still coming up everywhere. Uh, one little tip here, don't run that too long without that top cover on there. You're not getting the proper uh, cooling going through those fins on your cylinder right there, so don't do that too much. Put it all back together, not work great. Check this out. There you go guys, that just cleared itself finally. And uh, don't worry about that white smoke. It's gonna clear itself up as that carburetor is flushing through with that new fuel that you have in there. It's gonna clear itself out. You go cut some wood or run it outside for a little bit. Maybe even just a minute, 60 seconds, something like that. It's not gonna smoke anymore. It's gonna be right back to the way that uh, you used to run your chainsaw. And it's gonna sound great. You just save some money. So there you go, that wasn't actually that hard to do that. No reason to take that into a shop to get them to do it. A lot of times they'll actually take the carburetor apart and everything and cost you a lot of money. I hope I saved you guys some money. Give me that thumbs up button guys. Subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends and put some comments down. Let me know what you thought of this video. That's an easy thing to repair. That took me, that actually took me maybe two sips. Keystone Light, Steve out.